and welcome to another special one-shot for the Comic Station. Today we have a special guest, though he's not with a comic per se. Uh, comics are expanding from the paper into our living rooms, on the TV, the movie theaters, and on our gaming consoles. So we have a special guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Reed. I'm Director of Community and Customer Support at Gazillion Entertainment, and we're making a game called Marvel Heroes. Marvel Heroes is a uh, MMO RPG. Uh, how do, how would you define the MMO RPG as far as what uh, Marvel Heroes is trying to bring to the genre? We call it a massive online RPG, um, partly because it's just easier to say. Um, uh, online action RPG, I should say, because the action part is is very important to us. Um, our roots and, and the style of the game is an action RPG, uh, as personified by many games in the past, um, but most notably for us, Diablo and Diablo 2. Um, David Brevik, who's president of the company, was one of the co-creators of Diablo and Diablo 2, so obviously has a lot of experience in you know the formative years of the genre. Um, so it's an action RPG, that means it's played uh, from an isometric perspective, a fixed 3D perspective, uh, you click to move around the screen, you click to attack characters and that sort of thing. Um, very easy to play, um, uh, but uh, you know, kind of difficult to master and with a lot of, a lot of depth. But the thing that we're adding to it, um, apart from obviously the Marvel side of things, is that it's massively multiplayer. So you will be playing and running around the world with thousands of people at the same time. It is online all the time. Uh, and experiencing things on a scale that really no other action RPG has really tried. Um, most action RPGs tend to be about you, uh, you know, on your own solo with a bunch of uh, enemies around you. But we have a lot of heroes um, and a lot of giant threats for heroes to take down, which is kind of appropriate to the Marvel Universe. All right. um, as you mentioned, it's free to play. How does the free to play uh, come in? I know uh, I have played the beta for a little while and I know you have a certain set of five starter characters that everyone gets and then later they can either find in drops or purchase. Um, mm -hmm. How does the purchasing work? Do you purchase credits? Do you purchase the characters themselves? You do You do purchase something that we're calling G's, which is our, uh, our in-game currency. Uh, you purchase that with, with real money. Um, and then you can use G's to buy heroes, you can buy costumes, you can also buy a variety of consumable items. Um, or as you say, you can just play and, and you know, get them as random drops. Um, there's five starter heroes, which are Storm, Scarlet Witch, uh, Thing, uh, for some reason I still Hawkeye. Believe it's Hawkeye, and Daredevil. Um, and uh, you can play through the whole game with those guys for free if you like. You can play all the way to the end of the game and finish it off. Um, yeah, that's very important to note is that uh, you're not selling story or chapter or anything. It's simply cosmetic or your favorite characters if you really want them, but you can go I mean, straight through without spending anything. That's right. Yeah, we, we define, you know, um, some people occasionally are like, well, how do you define content? And the answer is we define content as the thing that you play, you know, character that you play is important for sure. Um, but the, the story that you play and the environments you move through and the, you know, the gameplay you encounter, that's all content and none of that content is gated. You know, it's all for free. There's no, um, you know, oh, you got to the final boss, but now you have to spend money or anything like that. Um, yeah, so you can go through and play the whole game for free using any one of those characters. You get to choose one of those at the start. And then, yeah, hopefully you'll get some drops along the way and grab some grab some heroes. Um, yep. And what you do, you know, hopefully you're you know encouraged to go back and play as them. Uh, or yeah, you can just go ahead and buy a hero. You can buy. You'll be able to buy during you know gameplay. Um, you know, post launch, but pre launch, um, we have a thing called the founders program. Yeah, you can... agonizing over those. <laughs> Uh, you can basically buy, you know, one of your favorite heroes um, or several of your favorite heroes or even all of the heroes that we have at launch um, in one of the Founders Program packs. Yeah, uh, the Founder packs, I know you have, the first one is if you buy one character, you get it for uh, $20 and you get a, spe uh, a bunch of other stuff thrown in it as well. And then the next step is $60, you get four characters, so obviously a better price. And then you get the whole pack. It's a big whopping... Uh, yeah, the two ultimate pack... Uh, the ultimate pack is uh, $200, well, $199.99. Um, we've actually got, um, we're, you know, we're always uh, looking at doing discounts and, and that kind of thing. Um, but the ultimate pack uh, includes every character at launch and every costume that will be available to purchase at launch. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's easily the best value. Um, it also includes, you know, bonus currency, boosts, uh, and a couple of permanent account level buffs uh, on your XP and item find. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool. And of course, there's the four exclusive costumes, um, which are only in, available in the Ultimate Pack, which include uh, the Iron Man Mark Forty Two armor, which is going to be seen on screen in about ooh, a month now. Um, yeah, that. Um, the Hulk Maestro costume, which is Hulk when he was kind of uh, sort of a, a story where he ended up in the future, and you know he ends up kind of being bad, but uh, it's a cool looking uh, Hulk outfit. And uh, Wolverine as Weapon X, which is kind of when he was running around in the forest just yeah. after he escapes the Weapon X program. Well, and course, one of my favorites. Yeah, and, and the one that most people get very excited about is the Spider-Man symbiote costume. Um, right after Spider-Man came back from Secret Wars, um, he had uh, the symbiote outfit and was running around using it as Spider-Man, and we've, we've created a costume that kind of pays homage to that. So he has... Um, uh, special visual effects, different animations, and all that kind of thing. So we're really trying to make him very special for people. All right. Well, each of the characters, they, they don't only bring their unique look or their appearance to it as well. It's not just a costume, but each, char each character uh, has their own powers, has their own abilities. Um, for example, I was playing as a Scarlet Witch. She, ha she has some great area of effect that I was really using um, some debuff that was going on, uh, coupled, and then you have other characters. Um, obviously, you get you mentioned the Hulk is uh, very strength. He can do a lot of area uh, power. Iron Man was uh, I found uh, very one on one, very strong, one mm -hmm. character at a time, weeding down the enemies. Um, so, but each character has their own abilities, and then to differentiate that further, you have the loot. Um, different armor pieces, different uh, gloves, costumes, uh, let's see, the uh, headgear, so forth, and they all add different things, different uh, attributes to help you differentiate your character. So mm -hmm. even though I may, that's another thing in this game, is you can run into multiple Scarlet Witches. Yep. Each one's going to be a little different based on how the person plays, how they've uh, built up that character. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, every character is going to have access to at least 21 uh, powers. And um, basically, they can, uh, you can build up your power tree in, in whatever way you decide to, you know, to build it. Um, there aren't so many restrictions on that. Um, we've got, obviously, passive and active powers as well. So the idea is, at least we hope, that people will um, go in and create their own version of Scarlet Witch or their own version of Wolverine and, and you know, enjoy um, creating them the way that they want to create them. And then, as you said, um, we have loot. Uh, loot is a little different in our game than other action RPGs in that you don't see it change your character visibly. Um, but that's not really you know, a big deal because we have a, a ton of alternate costumes in the game as well, which can be found again as random drops. Alternate costumes change your characters from head to toe. Mm -hmm. um, loot is um, basically a, you know, stat only, but um, loot uh, can really change you know, the way that your character plays in a variety of ways. Many pieces of loot will grant um, powers um, or, or bonus to your powers, ranks in, in certain powers. And then we have all kinds of affixes. You know, we have damage reflection and freezing and damage over time and, you know, uh, health grants and health regeneration, um, movement speed, attack speed. There's a whole pieces of loot. And then the loot is, um, unsurprisingly, uh, green, blue, uh, purple, you know, sorry. Yes, no, that's right. Yeah, and then up to, like, orange and... Uh, yeah. And it's really, e really easy to tell as soon as it drops. Do you want to pick that up? Like yeah, yeah. after after a while, when my inventory was getting full, and you do have an inventory based on slots, not on uh, size or weight or anything. And uh, so once I started getting full, I started only picking up green and above and so forth. So yeah, but we have we have some systems in place for like you know using that loot as well. For example, we have um, crafting and um, we have uh, gear and armor vendors you can donate your unused gear to it gains them experience and then they level up in power so that they give you better better stuff or yeah, in case um, I, I wanted to point that out because i thought that was a really really well way of balancing and a little give and take because uh like you said you can change it in and you can either cash it in for cash uh to help you buy new armor pieces uh from these uh vendors or you can give it to them to build up their experience which will let them sell you later better material as well better armor so mm -hmm. it's kind of uh i don't want to say catch 22 but a kind of balancing act here is do you want to give them a whole bunch of loot and depend on drops 
in the sake of le leveling them up so that you can buy better stuff later? Or do you want to just get a lot of gold now and be able to buy stuff and everything right then? Yeah, I think most people end up doing a balance, you know, like you, mm -hmm. you need credits for some things. So sometimes you have to sell that stuff. And then, you know, other times, uh, you know, you want to get the XP. But uh, the lure of getting better glue and getting better crafting recipes is often pretty strong. So, you know, I find myself donating a lot of stuff. But it does mean that, you know, what you were saying of like, oh, I'm just going to leave these, these greys on the ground, you know, they all have some value, you know, so yeah. you, you kind of want to get everything and then take it all back to town and, and you know, deal with it with it there so yeah there's a lot of um uh choices that you've got to make you know as, you, as you're playing you know which which makes it interesting that that's what action rpgs are about you know choices and and uh and making meaningful choices but um the other thing i was going to say was that uh uh yeah every character is designed to sort of play differently and what we, we try and do is make sure that um you really feel like you're playing those marvel characters it's important to us and, and that's really a big deal and, and making it as authentically marvelous has been a big deal. yeah um, one of the things I wanted to ask is how does, because you have so many players, multiple, massive multiplayer online usually have what are, uh, I believe are called shards. Um, are they based on server, location, um, how many players can be on a shard or anything at a time? We're still, um, we're still testing that to a certain degree because, um, we're still doing closed beta testing. Um, it's going to be thousands of players, um. The, the the funny thing is is the way that we we do it uh, and again you know we're not at final um, sort of final configuration yet but um, our plan is that actually you won't see uh, a big list of different shards um, we will make uh, intelligent decisions based on things like you know who is on your friends list um, or you know where are your guild um, members and that sort of thing and then we'll place you on those shards um, automatically um, the majority of the game is played in these large open spaces, what we call combat zones, um, where sort of dozens and dozens of people can be at the same time. However, obviously dozens and dozens of people is not a server, so we instance those zones. And then what happens is when you go in and uh, you, you join a party with other people, or you team up together, um, you'll end up uh, opening a portal and going to that person, so you'll end up you know in the same space together. So the game is sort of intelligent on that, but from our point of view, in terms of which you know, server you're going to be on, um, it shouldn't really make a difference. Like you shouldn't really see anything um, from the point of view of um, your server select and that sort of thing. Um, that's just kind of the way that we the way that we built it. Yeah. Speaking of those, uh, what do you call them? The player loc the locations that you start out with. Uh, you have locations where everyone's kind of together and joined, and then you have more, I guess, storyline based locations where you kind of go off a little bit more by yourself. Um, so you can play this. If you want to, you can really play it through fairly single player if you want to. Um, besides those locations, you can kind of go on and get to the storyline. Um, but I really like that in the uh, player area that you have these, uh, not only is it kind of randomly generating, so every time you come in and you say you go back and you play as another character, it changes a little bit, but um, you have these... Uh, mini missions, kind of side quests, where, for example, uh, Hell's Kitchen, uh, you announced was out there, and we, and that's where I've been spending most of my time in the beta, um, like, something will happen, and the muggers are attacking, uh, say, the police station, and then you go help out the police station, and then arsonists are attacking in this other area, and you go help them there. Um, I'm usually not a multiplayer, um, MMO player. But mm -hmm. I really, really like those. That got a lot of, uh, say, for the police station again. Uh, at one point, there was like five of us helping out the police, and uh, I was Scarlet Witch, so I was debuffing the enemies while uh, taking sure that the guys didn't get surrounded, and really uh, fostered teamwork, even though we just kind of came together, did that mission, and then separated again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we deliberately designed those public combat zones to have a lot of uh, points of interest. Um, so what you're talking about there with the police and everything else is what we call discovery. Um, discoveries are basically missions, little missions that you find, um, and they can be as small as like literally like two mobs. You know, mm. uh, in some cases, a lot of times we put discoveries like inside instances, and they might be if you stop and wait for a second, you might see a little funny little exchange of dialogue or something. You know, it gives you a little bit of insight into the story or into the game world. 
Um, and then when you take those guys out, you know, you'll get a little message like, you know, I don't know, uh, plans thwarted and it'll say like plus, you know, 50 XP or whatever. Um, so you get a little bonus experience, um, you know, and those kind of things happen. That's on the very small scale. On the larger scale of the public combat zones, uh, an example as you gave there with, with Hell's Kitchen, we have a discovery where you have to basically stop uh, police uh, at a barricade of being attacked by a group of thugs. And then what happens is, is that event when it happens, um, you get a little counter going on there. And I think in this case, you've got to defeat 40 different thugs. Um, and that's easily done by a player over you know a few minutes of work. But if there's a group of you running around or there's a bunch of people coming through randomly, everybody gets to contribute to that. Excuse me. And then if you manage to do it, um, then you get an XP bonus and everybody does who participated in that mission. So, mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, it's a lot of fun and keeps you engaged as you're running around in the zone. As you say, um, the zones, the public combat zones are randomized. Um, so you do find that as you go in again later on, you know, it's changed, it's random, and um, you'll find that uh, things aren't necessarily in the same space you expect. So things move around and entrances and exits can move. And the other thing that we do, which you may or may not have seen in the beta review, we have these things, called, uh, we call them treasure rooms. Um, we might need to come up with a better name. But essentially, that... Oh, that makes sense. I, I found uh, two of them off on the sides. Yeah, yeah, and we do have treasure in them. But these are little little kind of tiny instances that are things like, um, they're, they're thematically appropriate to the zone, right? So like in Hell's Kitchen, um, you know, there's a grocery store. Uh, and you go in there and it's being it's being held up by the Magia, uh, Magia you know, who are sort of extorting these guys. So, you know, you'll take out a few of their thugs and you rescue some people. And then you'll also maybe take out some of our elite mobs who are a little bit harder to beat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get a little treasure reward at the end. Of it. And that's instance for you. So, yeah, you can go in and solo that or you can go in with whoever's in your party. Um, and you can solo the game, um, but it is going to be it's going to be pretty tough. Um, you know, we're, we're putting in some of the late uh, stages of content right now and. I think it's safe to say that some of the last bosses and stuff are going to be pretty hard to take down. Um, yeah, it fosters a lot of uh, teamwork, not just the difficulty, but the situations that you put them in, like the uh, like the random battles and everything. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I certainly hope people can get together. That's you know kind of one of the fun things about Marvel. And and also the game is like oh you know we can see a, a team of Punisher and Wolverine, you know Scarlet Witch and uh, you know Deadpool. You know, um, whatever you want to do, um, that's that's kind of fun. And also, of course, the characters, you know, have uh, voiceover lines and stuff that actually interact with each other. And and you know, there's little lines of dialogue and snippets that they say to each other. So you get a nice, cool Marvel feel when you're doing it, which is which is neat. Yeah, you uh, you did a lot of uh, not just on the characters, but you, as you said, the uh, the character lines, a lot of the locations, Hell's Kitchen, obviously, Daredevil, and everything, uh, New York. You have uh, the home bases, uh, well, really Stark Towers, the Avengers. Um, you have a lot of uh, care about not just characters that you can play, but some of the NPCs. Uh, Nick Fury is an NPC, so forth. You get a lot of them on the sides. Uh, some of them may just be there to give you little uh, uh, quips or words about the world, and mm -hmm. some of them may be there to give you missions. Um, you obviously have the weapons, you have all the armors. Um, you, you took a lot of care to put in details that uh, fans will notice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're all Marvel fans, you know. We want to make it as offensively Marvel as we possibly can. You know, so we've got a lot of details in there, a lot of Easter eggs. You know, we're even starting to put in missions now. We haven't really got a name for them yet, but we have some missions that you go and you talk to, you know, NPC heroes and stuff in the world. Like, we have one right now where you get to learn a bit about the history of the Avengers. From the point of view of the Avengers, you know, you get to talk to Wonder Man, he tells you about how he joined the team, you get to talk to Valkyrie, you get to learn about her interaction with the Avengers and her time in the Defenders and stuff. So there's actually a lot of really cool Marvel lore in there as well, um, which we're really excited to put in, you know. Um, you know, we, we've got whatever it is, 50, 60 years of Marvel history to draw on, and, and we're really happy to do so, you know, as far as we're concerned. You know, everybody's got their favorite period of Marvel history, everybody's got their favorite characters, their favorite costumes, their favorite villains. And as many of these things as we can, and we can, you know, we'll, we'll do it, you know, so we're trying to get in as much as we can. Yeah. Um, how did this project start? Did uh, Marvel come to you? Did you go to Marvel? I wasn't with the company when, when those negotiations happened. I came on, on board afterwards. But as I understand it, it was, it was as, you know, yeah, we did approach Marvel and, um, you know, said to them, hey, you know, we're interested in acquiring the license. Um, Marvel's a licensing company a lot, you know, and, and, you know, so... I guess they were excited and happy with our pitch, and you know it went from there. All right. Um, 
as you mentioned before, the president has some background uh, with Diablo, uh, specifically one and two. Um, what if anything, have you guys been, uh, say, watching some of the competition, say, um, seeing how online games have been releasing lately, um, some do or don'ts, something that you're really paying attention to? Obviously, with the beta, you're uh, working some stuff out um, as well. Uh, I think a lot of people are excited about stuff that we're excited about. You know, it's like building things on a really large scale, allowing people to play the Marvel heroes. You know, those things are, are pretty exciting. It's the sort of the scale and the, um, I should say, the breadth of heroes that we've got on, a, on, on, on offer for everybody as well. Um, so I think that's, that's you know, the kind of stuff that have, has people excited. And we're, of course, you know, we watch the competition all the time for obvious reasons, you know. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we have a good experience and we try and learn from other people's mistakes. And I wouldn't say, um, you know, I don't think anyone's perfect in this world. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, expecting perfection is, is only going to lead to disappointment. Um, but, you know, we're trying our best. Um, so, you know, we certainly hope we'll have a, you know, a decent launch and we're trying to be very careful in terms of, um, how many people we allow to play the game, you know, in the first few days. And we're trying to make sure that that gets gradually ramped up through, uh, our early game access program. Um, so yeah, you know, we're pretty hopeful that it'll, it'll... Um, I had a personal question with, uh, one of the things was, uh, when you had the characters, you said you can get into parties and everything. Um, is there going to be any way to trade? uh whether it be gear or maybe some of the costumes or characters or anything like that what can be traded what can't i know some of the uh loot for example it gets bound to your character yep. so current thinking on characters and costumes is that they will not be tradable um the reason is is because um it would encourage too much in the way of kind of uh um uh account and, and it, it could basically encourage farming um, yeah i mean like you know yeah. Well, I mean, multiple really accounts cool. because it's free people could just make that's thing and we we're, we're very happy for people to farm for their own purposes and that's part of the thing that many people do with action rpgs but we don't want to encourage a situation where a professional company comes in farming the game and then trading and selling those items on yeah. you know the open market and and uh and profiting off of it so that's that's the reason that and at least initially they will not be tradable um certain items are going to be and also, to be honest, uh, secure trading is something that we're working on, um, but it might not make launch, but it probably will do not long after. Um, so you'll be able to trade your, you know, some of your best gear and maybe give it to your guildmates and, and that kind of thing. But obviously, to make a secure trade system work, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to go into that. There's a lot of ways to break those systems. So, you know, we're trying to be careful and making sure that it works well and everyone's happy with it. All right. Um, well, I've been enjoying the beta. Um, a lot of people online, people I've been playing with have... Uh, a lot of good discussion going on, so I've enjoyed it. Um, one thing, uh, it's coming out obviously for PC. Is uh, what kind of platforms are you looking at? Uh, where are you looking to say? I know you have it on MarvelHeroes. dot uh, com, but is it going to come on Steam? Any of those kind of platforms? We are looking very carefully at Steam. Um, you know, I haven't got an announcement on that yet, but you never know. Um, we'll we'll let you know uh, as and when that that comes around. Um, we are looking to do a Mac version after we launch the PC. Okay. Um, basically, you know, to build that as soon as the PC version is out, and that's it right now. Um, no current plans for console. Um, the console version of the game would be a pretty radically different proposition. Um, if you've seen any other coverage of other famous action RPGs recently who may have potentially moved to console, you'll see how much different the game becomes. You know, when uh, when it's on console. So. That's something we're not looking at, um, but uh, who knows for the future. But but Mac is a problem. All right. Um, what, any future plans as far as uh, long term continued support? So like uh, any, I imagine you're gonna uh, probably continue to release new characters, new costumes, and such. Any maybe storyline DLC added or anything like that? I think all of those. Um, we definitely plan to do uh, new costumes. Uh, new characters take a little longer. We're definitely going to be doing that. Um, and then, yeah, storyline stuff is, is absolutely possible as well. Um, you know, we, we've committed to doing PvP and end game content at launch. Um, I'm sure we'll be expanding in both of those areas because you know they're important things to expand on. The story thing is a little more tricky because, of course, the story does have an ending um, at the end of the game. Um, so adding more story is something that we definitely want to do, but it might take a little longer to do because of story is the most expensive and difficult thing to do so yeah we'll see um but uh, we certainly hope to do awesome um 
yeah, like I said, I've been playing the beta. I really enjoy it. I hope other people get a chance to play it. And uh, any fan that likes Diablo, likes action RPGs, uh, MMOs, and obviously it really helps if they're an MMO player. But they don't have to be. That's if they are a uh, to really like the Marvel universe. You don't have to like all of these to like this game. And I've been having a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm not usually an MMO player. But I've really been getting into it, and every time I see that there's an open beta, I jump in as often as I can. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, action RPGs is one of the best things about them, is that, relatively speaking, all you need to do is, you know, point and click, and, and you'll probably get, you know, some of it figured out pretty fast. So it's very accessible. Uh, I think if you've been someone who's been put off by the nature of MMO, maybe thinking they're a bit slow or a bit boring, you know, I think it's something to give, you know, give it a go, and... Uh, if you're any kind of Marvel fan, I think we'll probably have something for you in here. Yeah, um, yeah, I did want to touch on the accessibility. Like I said earlier, uh, the color system for the loot, um, the mapping to the keys are really simple. It's right down the ASDF line. Um, you can set up your main uh, actions. You had the first two actions, the uh, click and the right click. Mm -hmm. So really easy to pick up. Uh, control, like you said, it's isometric, so you don't have to worry about the whole changing the camera and everything moving around. Um, yeah, I found it. I picked it up and got right into it. So yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to play. Yeah. All right. Um, again, why don't you go over where we can pick it up? When uh, I know it's coming out in June, when go over all that. Sure. Yeah, we uh, we launch on June fourth. Early game access starts on May twenty eighth for people who have got the ultimate pack. Um, I think it's. Three days later for people who have premium packs, and then five days later, so two days before uh, June 4th for anyone who has a starter pack. Um, if you don't have a starter pack for whatever reason, you can play for free, um, and June 4th is the day that we open up to the whole world. Um, and yeah, you know that's that's when we go. And if you want to get more information, you should go to marvelheroes.com. Uh, Founders program uh, uh, packs are on sale there, and you can follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and YouTube. And all over the place, and all those links are all over the website. All right. Uh, why don't you give yourself a little plug? What's your Twitter handle? Uh, your community manager. So my my own is uh, at Rockjaw. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to follow me there, feel free. I don't always tweet about work, but you know, uh, I tweet about stuff, and you know, if you can handle it, then feel free. Yeah, stuff. I like stuff. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Hang on. All right. That was. Steven from uh, Marvel Heroes, a new MMO for the Marvel Universe. Uh, this is Paul Nisi from Comic Station. Thank you for joining us for another one-shot special interview. And stay tuned. We're going to continue coverage of the Marvel Heroes. I especially want to keep playing it and telling people about it. So we'll go through that. All right. Thank you very much. And we will see you in the next Comic Station. Why don't you stick around?